So today we are going to look at a very interesting uh, idea. It's a very simple idea. It is called the sandwich theorem. Now what does a sandwich do? You take two pieces of bread and you basically squeeze it something inside in the middle, right? And that's exactly the idea here. So let us first look at the basic uh, uh, assumption behind sandwich theorem or basic statement behind sandwich theorem. Suppose I had two functions, f of x, let us say was less than g of x, less than or equal to g of x, always. What does it mean in terms of graphs? It basically means that if I had f of x, which is what I am more interested in right now, let us say f of x was a graph like that. What should g of x look like? It should always be above. So if f of x was here, this value, g of x must be above that. So that means g of x can be that way. Now this, if I call this f of x, g of x could basically behave, could be quite large, it could actually go up all the way and it could come down, but can it cross this one? Can it cross this line? Actually it can't because if it crosses, then at that point, g of x is less than f of x, but I just told you f of x is less than g of x always. So if that is the case, it could come like this, it could at most just about touch this and then go on, but it can never actually cross. So this is g of x. So as I approach this point, let us call this point A. As x approaches A, now A need not be there, A could be here. Okay. So if I took some A, some point there, as x approaches A this way or that way, what is going to happen to g of x? Right now g of x is probably coming and becoming very close to f of x. So what will happen? Limit x goes to A, f of x could become equal to g of, g of x, limit of g of x. Or maybe A was here, in which case as I approach A, f of x value is this, g of x value is that. But is it ever possible that the limit of g of x is less than the limit of f of x? No. Not possible. So limit of f of x must be less than or equal to limit of g of x. Remember this also is x tends to a, that also is x tends to a. Is it possible that there is a value of x where you have f of something, there is a value of x for which g of x is less than this value. Yes, that is possible because here g of x could be this value. This is lower than that, except that at this place, f of x has to be even lower than g of x, that is all. At the same place, g has to be more. But here when we are doing limits, you are approaching the same place. So as you are approaching the same place, the limit of f of x is less than the limit of g of x. Now why is this useful? Because maybe there are situations where I have f of x is less than g of x, but it is greater than h of x. Where will, how will h of x look? It will have to be below f of x. Right? So at any point, I can then conclude that limit of f of x must be more than the limit of h of, x. h of x. But what happens, I mean it may be difficult to calculate f of x, but what happens if limit of g of x was some number, let us call that b. And it happens that h of x also starts to become close to b. So what is the limit of h of x? b. Suppose I know that h of x, here it is probably lower than f of x and is much, much lower than g of x. But as x goes towards a, maybe h of x gets really close and then starts to become different again. Now what is happening here? Limit of h of x, as x goes towards a, what is the value of h of x? b. As x goes towards a, what is the value of g of x? b. So this thing becomes b. This thing becomes b. So what should this be? b. So what are we doing? We are basically taking f of x and we are basically sandwiching it between these two. Okay, sometimes we say that we are squeezing this point between these two. So effectively, you know that f of x 
is between g of x and h of x as g of x is as you go towards a g of x and h of x are both reaching the same limit so therefore f of x must also reach the same limit now so the limit of this must be less than the limit of this must be uh, greater than the limit of this now this is generally true this statement is always true but when is the sandwich theorem useful it is useful if this was also the same as that then it becomes very useful suppose i tell you that this was 2 and that was 3 then with that you can conclude that this fellow's limit is between 2 and 3 okay but that is not good enough because you not found the limit but suppose i tell you this is 2 and that is also 2 this has to be equal to 2 i don't even have to prove that the limit exists because if this limit exists and that limit exists then as you are approaching this fellow is approaching this fellow is approaching now this may be oscillating a lot but the oscillation is going to become very small here it has to become because it's always between these two let us do a couple of examples to see how this is useful i hope the basic principle is clear right so what we do is we don't know how to find this but i can write f of x is less than something else whose limit we can find and i can write something else whose limit we can find and then we'll hopefully find those two limits to be equal in which case the limit of f of x will also be the same is that idea okay so let us just try out one example then we'll be able to understand this better now let us look at this question here we want to find the limit as y goes to infinity 4y plus 8 sin y by 3 plus root of y square plus 8 now one way to think about it is to say well the sin y keeps going between plus 1 and minus 1 can i say sin y is approximately y not here this is not going to zero this is going to infinity so you can't say sin y is approximately y in fact y becomes larger and larger but sin y fluctuates between minus 1 and plus 1 okay so if i want to think about f of x if i call this f of x or f of y okay now what can i say f of y is less than or equal to what is the maximum possible value for sin y 1 so whatever happens it is less than 4y plus 8 by 3 plus root of y square plus 8 and it is greater than or equal to what is the lowest value i can get minus 1 so it will be 4y minus 8 by 3 plus root of y square plus 8 now if i find this fellow's limit and i find that fellow's limit as y becomes very large then we have solved the problem now if i look at this this is easy why because 4y plus 8 now i am going to actually start we can one possibility is to divide by y okay so that is the formal way to go about it which i'll do here what i want you to think about is just an approximation let us think about the approximation 4y plus 8 behaves like 4y y is infinity so this is like 4y and then root of y square plus 8 behaves like root of y square which is y y plus 3 behaves like y so therefore this is equal to 4 so the limit must be 4 okay i will formally show you that the limit will be 4 if i take this fellow 4y minus 8 behaves like 4y so if i write approximately 4y and then this denominator is going to be y and therefore this is equal to 4 so this fellow is between 4 and 4 as the limit approaches right so this is limit y goes to infinity i have already done limit y goes to infinity that's why i have taken this is 4y by y now formally you cannot write this in an exam right because this approximation is good for us to check but what will i do formally this much is okay this is exact then you say well i want the limit of this limit of this so i will now write the solution below so here what we do is to say okay this is less than or equal to this quantity which is limit of now divide everything by y what happens to the numerator 4 plus 8 by y 3 by y plus root of 1 because that by y comes in here right goes inside as y square 1 plus 8 by y square okay limit y goes to infinity and that is whatever we are asking for that is greater than or equal to this thing and here again i can write limit y goes to infinity 4 divided by y 8 by y by 3 by y plus root of 1 plus 8 by y square 
Now, when y becomes very large, what is this? 0. 8 by y is 0. So, this becomes 0. This becomes 0. This becomes 0. What is the denominator? 0 plus root of 1 plus 0, which is 1. Numerator, 4. So, 4 by 1, 4. What about this side? Same thing, this becomes 0, this becomes 0, this becomes 0, so 4 by 1, 4. So now what do we know? We know that this fellow's limit is less than equal to 4, is greater than equal to 4. What number is less than equal to 4 and greater than equal to 4? 4. 4. So therefore, this limit is equal to 4. So what we have done here is to use the sandwich theorem. We have sandwiched this thing between two other things and we have basically compressed it in. Now, the sandwich theorem for these problems are okay, useful, but this is not the real power of the sandwich theorem because I could have actually argued that, come on, when I have y, 1 is small compared to y, root y is small compared to y, sin y is definitely small compared to y because sin y will be between minus 1 and plus 1, whereas y is going to go off to infinity. So, I could have directly started off by saying sin y by y becomes equal to 0 when y is very large. Sin y by y is equal to 1 when y goes towards 0. But sin y by y is equal to 0 when y becomes very large because sin y is between minus 1 and plus 1 and y becomes infinity. This is just to show that we can do it using the sandwich theorem. But the real power of sandwich theorem comes when you have a whole bunch of terms to add up. Okay, Like it is not an infinite series but many times what happens is you have a bunch of terms n terms that you want to add up and then you want to find out the limit as n becomes infinity.